sometimes when we are around people who have similar interests or similar goals, instead of trying to work with them, we kind of try to block them for some reason. Sometimes we feel like we have to block them because if we don't block them, they're gonna come and take our position or they're gonna take something from us and we're gonna be without. The whole reason why I wanna talk about this is because when we behave this way, when we feel this way, we temporarily forget our own value. We temporarily forget what it is that we bring to the table. Hey peeps, I'm Rick Roberts, and this is Rick Roberts Like the Podcast, where we talk about my faith, my thoughts, my life. And today is Thursday Thoughts, and my thought for you today is insecurities. Now, I was recently talking to a friend of mine about insecurities. And, you know, when I was actually, um, it's funny, when I was actually studying photography and learning about the different tricks of the trade, I realized when I was actually learning about photography, a lot of photographers kind of kept, you know, tips and tricks to themselves because they didn't want to pass on, you know, their their ideas, their, their skills, and their tricks to their competitor. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because as we're going through life, there is a part of us that feels insecure about how we are and when we see someone else that may threaten our position we kind of go inward on ourselves and we want to protect it and so sometimes the way that we protect it is we draw back um we have this little bit of feeling of uh i want to say jealousy but i think it's more jealousy for the fact that they could take our position take what we feel that we are holding or that we want to obtain and as we feel this bit of insecurity this bit of jealousy we then kind of secretly wish the person would die yeah i said it inside we secretly wish that this person would just go away um and we try to find ways to kind of slow them down or block them and what i've what i've come to discover is that in life God has made each and every one of us unique. Like, we're all different for a reason. The, th- the things that matter to you may be completely different than what matters to me. In fact, there could be things that we both care about passionately, that we both agree on, and we want to do the same thing. And if we come up against each other, there may be a feeling of this person is trying to take my position, they're trying to take what I have, and I need to protect it, and I need to block them. And that whole inner feeling, that whole inner battle, is something that I think we need to be careful of. Sometimes our insecurities come from how we feel. We feel that people do not perceive us well and that they don't receive us well. And so since we feel like they're not receiving us well, it makes us feel like we don't belong, that we don't fit in. And as we feel that way, we kind of go inward on ourselves and we start to hide ourselves away. And this is a natural response. It's something that, you know, everyone has a a degree of. And what I want you to do is, I want you to try to realize is that it doesn't matter if you are like everyone else or if you're completely unique and different. The truth of the matter is, is that everyone is different. And we all make up people. We all make up society. And it's our differences that helps us to bring a unique spin and perspective to living life. And so you may feel that people are looking at you that they don't, you know, quite get you, that you don't quite belong. But I want you to make sure that you do not become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you feel that people do not perceive you well, you'll start to behave in such a way that makes it where you draw unnecessary negative attention to yourself. And the more that you do that, the more that you feel and think that people aren't receiving you well, and it becomes this weird cycle. And so... Anytime that you feel like people are not receiving you well and they're starting to feel negative inside, I want you to do me this favor. Take a deep breath, breathe, relax, calm down, and say, you know what? I don't care. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but I want you to truly believe that you do not care. What's the worst that can happen? They don't quite like what you've done. 
a lot of the times the things that we do isn't determined by other people. It is what we're trying to do for ourselves, what we're trying to do for our families, to build our lives, to move forward. And there's going to be lots of people who maybe who don't agree with your your direction, your vision, um, the way that you do things. That's fine. You need to be true to yourself and you need to say, I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'm going to do what I know needs to be done. I'm going to blaze this trail. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to live my life and I'm going to be true to my authentic self. I am going to um, continue to just be focused on living a life that pleases God and no one else. Uh, To be more practical for some of you guys who may not be spiritually minded, I want you to keep in mind this. Sometimes what we feel is happening isn't necessarily what's really happening. Um, If you listen to my podcast uh, last week, I talked about embarrassed. I felt so embarrassed at how bad that my class was going, I got in my head and I hyped it up. Where my students gave feedback and they said it was nothing. Like, I messed up a couple steps. That was it. That's all they took from it. But in my head, I was concerned about what they were thinking and how they were feeling that I went so negatively uh, on myself inwardly. And that's what we tend to do when we feel insecure, when we feel like we're not being received well, we turn this negative energy inward and we start to behave in a way that's a little bit off and we become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so be careful that you do not do this. When you feel like people aren't receiving you well, that you're not coming across well, just take a second and then go at it again. You know, and if, they, if they're not getting it, if they're not liking what you're putting down, just move on. Be like, you know what? Uh, I see that we're not coming. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you see this? How are you interpreting this? What are your thoughts? And if you find that this is real, that this person is not receiving you well, move on to the next person. Move on to the next thing. You know, continue to do what needs to be done and let someone else deal with that person. You don't have to deal with everybody. You don't have to be around everybody. Now, if it's at your work, if it's at your school, if it's someone that you're married to, if it's someone that's in your family, you have to do what you can to protect yourself and to build a type of relationship that is civil, that you can continue to um, communicate in a healthy way to be able to coexist. But you do not have to agree with everything that person does. And they don't have to agree with everything you do. They just have to do the best to understand each other so you can communicate to move forward and coexist. So I know your insecurities, like I said, can come from the fact that you do not feel you're being received well. But do not become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Be very careful of that. Sometimes when we are around people who have similar interests or similar goals, instead of trying to work with them, we kind of try to block them for some reason. Sometimes we feel like we have to block them because if we don't block them, they're going to come and take our position or they're going to take something from us and we're going to be without. The whole reason why I want to talk about this is because when we behave this way, when we feel this way, we temporarily forget our own value. We temporarily forget what it is that we bring to the table. Now, you are a remarkable person. You have been given the gifts, the talents, the skills, your personality to be able to do something amazing in this world. And there are going to be people who want to do a similar thing that you're going to do but they do not have your unique perspective. You see, the reason why it is so important for you to live your life is because each thing that you go through, each experience you have, it gives you a unique outlook on how you handle yourself in this world and how you approach problems. Now, the great thing about who you are is that God is simply molding you day by day into maturing into this amazing individual. You are literally one in, you know, a a billion, okay? Now, there are going to be people out there who want to do the same thing you do, but they're unique as well. Now, instead of you being threatened by these other individuals out there who are trying to do the same thing you're doing, I want you to value yourself, and I want you to value what it is that you bring to the table. Now, here's the weird thing. 
when you feel insecure, for some reason you get this amnesia where you forget all the great things that you've done, all the great things that you've achieved, all the past praise that you had, and you only see fear. Fear that this person is coming for you, that they're going to take what's yours, and that people are going to forget about you and no longer value you. Think about this. If people are so quick to forget your value, if they're so quick to forget about you, then they're not really the right people you want to have in your life. They're what we call wishy-washy people. They come and they go. They're not really here to stay. They're here to take from you and to move on to the next person. You don't need these types of people in your life. What you're building, what it is that you're looking to do is to have something solid and something that's stable that can, you know, stand the test of time. And these type of people will not stand the test of time. So continue to focus on who you are, on what it is that you bring to the table. And what you bring to the table is simply your values things that are important to you. The way that you approach each problem is with the glasses of, I need to address this problem because my values say that this is important. And as you focus what's important to you, what's important to the people that you are serving, then even if that person does the same task that you do, the results will be different because your style, your values, your focus will go into that result and their style, their focus, their whole behavior, their values will go into their results. And those two things can come together and give a great overall outcome for that actual problem that you're looking to solve. And I want you to try to have that more mature mindset. Do not allow, you know, these whispers of negativity to come into your ear where you feel like you are no longer valuable, that you're no longer, you know, needed. Because the thing that you do is so important. The way that you conduct yourself, the way that you carry yourself is is valuable. Sometimes we also feel insecure when we feel that the other person is doing such an amazing job and we have to follow them. You know, you say, oh, that person sang so beautifully, or they presented so well, or they did so well at this thing. How am I ever going to compete with that? What I want to say to you is this. Don't compete with that. Just do your best to shine. Do your best to shine. Like, whatever it is that you do, just do that with all your might. Lean into that with everything that you've got and stop trying to compete with that person next to you. You ain't got to compete with that. Do you. Do you, boo. Do you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Just do you, okay? You know, there was a story, and I'm going to say it. I'm I'm having a whole bunch of stories today. It's Thursday Thoughts. I'm bringing it. There's a story of this competition between the wind and the sun. The wind said to the sun, hey, you see that guy over there with the hat and the coat? Let's do this little competition. I bet you that I can get him to take his coat off and his hat off. And the sun's like, all right, whatever you got, let's let's go. Bring it. Run it. Run it. And so the wind's over there. It starts off with this nice little... And the guy's like, oof. All right. And the wind's like, oh, oh okay. You think you're ready? He's like, oof. And the guy's like, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. And... The wind's like, okay, you think you got, and it it goes real hard, and it blows so hard, the guy is off the ground, holding on to the bench, hanging on to his hat, clenching like this to his coat, and the wind is blowing, it is moving as hard as it can, and the wind gets winded, it says, and the sun's like, are you done, you finished, you good, and the one's like, just do what you're going to do, man. Well, let's, see, let's see what you can do any better. If you think you can do better, let's see you do better. And the sun says, all right. And so the sun just simply stands there and shines a little brighter. And the guy's like, whew, okay. Takes his hat off, starts fanning himself. And the sun shines a little bit brighter. And the guy's like, whoo, whoo, drops the hat. And the sun just beams beams and the guy takes the coat off and the sun says that's how that's done you don't need to blow you don't need to make all that noise you just need to shine and i'm asking you 
Are you trying to block people? Are you trying to blow people over? Are you trying to, you know, do all you can, all this energy to stop that person, to move that person, to make them do what you want them to do? Or are you just going to stand there and shine? Shine, my friends. Stop trying to compete with everybody else and just be yourself. Because the way that you are, who you are, is bright enough to continue to change the situation. Now, if you find that you have some weakness in what you're doing, that you are not as you know responsible, as dedicated, as committed, and you're feeling that you know this person's gonna take your spot because you're not so committed, here's a good thing: competition, competition actually helps people to step up and to grow to it forces them forward because sometimes you get a bit stagnant you get a bit tired in what you're doing and you just kind of fall asleep at the wheel but when you're seeing someone else coming out to try to you know do their thing there should be a healthy level of competition inside yourself where you say okay I see this person's coming to take the field. You know what? Let's let's go. Let's do this thing. And let's have some fun going for it. You know, there is healthy competition. And then there's, you know, envy and jealousy. You don't want envy, jealousy. You don't want insecurity. But what you want is healthy competition. When you see that person, they're going, you know, 100%. And you say, you know what? I'm going to go 110. And when I go 110, you're like, I'm going to go 120. You know, you're going to keep pushing yourself the best that you can. And as you continue to push yourself, you find that you actually stretch a bit further than you ever thought you could. And that is why, you know, competition is so important. You need these people around to help push you to be better. As you get used to this push to be better, you then develop a stronger self-drive to continue to move yourself forward as well when this competition fades into the background. Because, trust me, I mean, look at you. If they gonna fade into the background, you know what I'm saying? So continue to keep being true to yourself, continue to keep working hard, and don't let yourself be threatened by another person coming to try to do what it is that you're trying to do. Because once again, you guys are two completely different individuals, two different perspectives, two different value systems. And even if you have the same value, you are still going to perform differently because of your whole history. You bring your past to the table. The way in which you have lived your life comes to the table. And this is going to help shape and scope what it is that you're building. Same thing with that person. Let's work together. And build something nice and not look to tear each other down. You know, it's funny. I was listening to Jim Rohn and he says, there's a there's a couple ways that you can have the biggest building in town. You can, you know, go out there and you can try to build it, which is what you should do. Um, or <laughs> you could do the, the, the easier approach, which is go get a sledgehammer and start knocking people's houses down. You know, you might knock the first building down. You might get the second one. But the third one... The guy standing outside and saying, you know what? I heard about you. You're a wrecker. You're not a builder. You're a destroyer. And people know you for tearing people down. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do is focus on building things up. Don't tear people down. Don't block people. Focus on yourself. Run your race and keep pushing yourself to be the very best. Do not feel that you know, you're worth less because someone else is stepping up. Rise to the occasion. And if they beat you, don't give up. (laughs) Get back. Work harder. Go to the lab. Go into your cave. Sit down. Go to the drawing board. And re-figure out how you're going to, you know, step up your game to be better. Not so that way you can just beat them. But because you want to be the very best version of yourself to address this problem. To bring forth a proper and positive solution. And so use this To move you forward, not to make you feel like you're less of a person. You know, the funny thing about insecurity is that sometimes when someone else gets success, when someone else does well, you look at that and it makes it where you think that you're less of a person because that person succeeded. Insecurity is really something that can really suck the joy out of your life. You have so many great things going for you. But whenever you let the success of someone else take away your happiness because you feel like you're not achieving as much as you should, 
then you're really losing perspective. You're not being happy for that individual. You're making a pity party for yourself. And it's easy to have that happen. You know, sometimes this happens because the the thing that you want may be praised from a particular individual. It could be your parent, could be um, your siblings, could be your friends, could be your job, could be your children. When you find that this other person or thing is getting this esteem this this high regard and you think back on all the times that you never got it the way that you wanted or anything close to that you then become a little bit bitter about it and this this is easy this is something that's natural you know i find that i experience this too sometimes when i hear people that are important to me or you know see that they are giving this type of positive energy to them or the or to these things and i'm not getting that and i feel like i'm not getting that i feel insecure i feel a bit envious i feel a bit jealousy that comes in there and then i feel bitter and then i have to say lord Oh, help me, please help me. You know, I I don't know why that I'm not getting the energy that I want from this person, um, but it sucks. And as I pray, as I talk to God, as I think about this, God's saying, "Look, you know what? I understand you'd love to have this attention. I'd, you'd love to have that type of praise. You'd like to have that type of energy, but you know what? You need to be secure in who I made you to be. I need you to make sure that you have." your mind balanced enough where if you get high praise or if you get negative, you know, trolling comments that you are okay because you are fine with who you are and you build that steel inside of who you are where these things won't bother you. You can't depend on praise of man. You can't depend on the negative comments of people. You need to be secure in who you are and that will stand the test of time. And as I get reminded of that lesson when I feel this type of, you know, you know, negative emotion, it helps me to keep things in perspective. And hopefully that will encourage you as well. You know, it would be great for you to get that information. It would be great for you to get that energy. You know, you do so many good things, but sometimes you do one hiccup here or there, and the energy is so heavy for the hiccup, and it's nothing for the good. And you're thinking, what's the point? The point is this. You don't need to spend your life trying to make other people happy. You need to be secure in who you are and continue to be true to who you are regardless of people are going to appreciate you or not. Because unfortunately, the world that we live in, not everyone will appreciate all the good things you do. But a lot of people will be very quick to jump on you the second you do something wrong. And so live your life for your own happiness. Live your life not to please others, but to be pleasing to God. Okay, that is what we live for. We live to to be a pleasing, happy sight in God, not for people to say, oh, look how good Rick is. Look how amazing Rick is. You know, he did that so well. You know, I ain't gonna lie. The pat on the back's nice, but I don't live my life for it. And I'm doing my best to make sure that I don't need it because, you know, there's more to life than positive, nice talks that might never come. There's actually a huge example in the Bible about this very thing. There was a guy by the name of King Saul. He was so insecure. I mean, when he was being elected as king, he was hiding with the supplies because he felt that he wasn't good enough and that people were going to judge him. And, you know, when God said, hey, he's, he's over there hiding in the supplies, he was, you know, brought out. People did, sure enough, say, hey, who's this guy? You know, they did judge him because he hid you know, sometimes when we are afraid of something, the way that we behave brings forth that bad result. If Saul stood up and stood there like, okay, you know what? I'm I'm intimidated by this thing, but I'm going to do my best to give you the, you know, the results, to give, be the best king for you that I can. If he would have stood there and not shook in his boots, he would have actually had a much better outcome. And so... As he continued to try to be king, he kept making mistakes because he was afraid of people instead of trying to be true to himself. And so finally God said, you know what, enough's enough. You are living your life to try to please people instead of being true to who you are and who I called you to be. I'm going to raise up a new king. And he did. He rose up David. And David was true to himself. 
King Saul said, hey, put my armor on to fight Goliath. And, and David was like, you know what? I respect you. I know you're king, but this ain't going to work for me. I need to do my thing, and I'm, I'm good. He went out there with a slingshot. You know the story. He shot a shot, took the man down. He continued to be true to himself. He said, I'm not going to take your spot. I'm not gunning for your spot, even though I'm anointed to be king. I'm not looking to take your spot. Let me see what we can do together so we can build this thing. And King Saul was just brooding and getting angry and just getting so envious because he used to have people singing his accolades whenever he'd walk around. But there came a point where David was a, a far better warrior than he ever was. And so people were singing David's accolades above his own. And when he heard that, it would just grind at him. It would just wear him down. And it would make him where he was so restless and so bitter that he wanted to kill David. And he threw his javelin twice trying to kill him. And so I share this story with you because if you are not careful, if you let your insecurities continue to work away at you, to grind on you, to continue to whisper negative things in your ear to say that you're no longer needed, you're no longer valuable, what's the point of even going, oh, people are going to like them better than me, and you live your life out of fear of people instead of being true to yourself, then you're right. You will lose everything. You will lose the very most important thing, which is who you are and what you value. So please, take this as something to think about. This is what I think about. I hear these things. I want to always make sure that I do not live my life out of fear, but that I live my life out of authenticity to who I am and what I believe. And that's why I share this podcast with you. You are remarkable. You are a wonderful person. Do not let the person that's coming in next to you intimidate you. Do not let yourself be insecure by outside things or negative thoughts. Be secure in the fact that God made you wonderfully and beautifully and that God has continued to keep putting things in your life to equip you to make you the very best version of yourself. Okay? Keep your head up and keep moving forward. I'm Rick Roberts and you stay classy. Bye.